Shh, this way. Ah! What's in you, scoundrel? You scared the dickens out of me. <laughs> Watson, be a good chap and uh, shed some light on us. Why, certainly. Good Lord, man, not that much. We'll be discovered. That's better. Hey, what's an old chum? I think I've got it. You see, nobody knows the day or the hour. Um, no shit em wood, Sherlock? Watson! Oh, sorry, I mean, no dung there, doctor? Uh, better. Isn't that why we're investigating? Isn't that why we're looking for the clues that the Lord Jesus Christ gave us? You know, he's also known as the Word. Precisely. And that is why we must look at every clue and every piece of evidence, no matter how minute. So, tell me, Holmes, what you thinking? Well, Bones, old man, I've formulated an hypothesis based on pertinent data from the historical documents. Ah, uh, you mean the Bible? Precisely! You see, the historical documents clearly lay out the events shall happen at the appointed times. Furthermore, the historical documents clearly lay out time periods that exist between said events. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. So, uh, what does that mean? What's an old man? Can't you see? We simply apply said time periods to the appointed times and we decipher which time periods fit perfectly between the appointed times that also match the narrative from the historical documents. By that, we should be able to work backwards to the date of our departure. Wow, that's great, but what if the date passes and nothing happens? What's it, old man? That may be the dumbest question you've ever asked. Again. Thank you very much. You see, the answer should be as clear as the nose upon your, um, upon my face. Um, nose hairs, uh, mustache, I, I'm not quite following. Oh, <laughs> Watson, you see, the answer is the same as it's been since we got on this case to solve this mystery. If a day passes, if an hypothesis proves incorrect, then we investigate further. We look deeper. We re-examine the clues and we see where we went wrong and we apply our new knowledge to the case so that we figure it out. Um, kind of like never give up, never surrender? Precisely! <laughs> but what about the people that tell us you should stop looking and stop trying to figure it out? Nobody knows the day or the hour. Stop trying to guess. You're hurting the body. Oh, pish posh. If we were hurting the body, then why do we have so many friends and family at our fun table? Oh yeah, it seems like people really like this. Precisely. <laughs> you see, I have an idea about these people. Who now would gain the most from us giving up? Who would gain the most from us stopping our investigation? Who would gain the most from us not knowing the mystery? Who has something to hide? Ah! Yes, you know it, don't you? Uh, Satan? Precisely! You see, Bones, there are some 
that have skeletons in their closet. Oh, uh, no offense. And none taken? Yes, they have skeletons in their closet. And they stand in front of the closet saying, don't look in here. But that is exactly where we want to look. Um, I guess that makes sense. Precisely. So, for those people that tell us to stop looking, I have one answer for them. No, 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 no. Precisely. So, Watson, would you like to hear my theory? Please, bring it on. Step aside, dear sir. But first, bonesy old man, I'd like to explain to you just where I've been this past many days. Um, in deep depression, unable to get out of bed because of the bone-crushing sadness of not having a rapture date to look forward to? <laughs> Don't be preposterous. No, Bones. In fact, I've been quite well. I've been eating and drinking. I went to a wedding where people were being married and given in marriage. With great pleasure, I pronounce that you are now husband and wife. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Amen. You now have to kiss your wife. Video. Oh. <laughs> Bless the lovely bride and groom. In fact, there was a young master, Gabriel King, who I've known since he was a little chap, being married to his lovely bride, Kirsten Hicks. Now, Bones, do you think it is a mere coincidence that I went to a wedding of Gabriel King? where kings were giving their young master in marriage. In fact, there were three kings there. Uh, probably more like 20 kings, but there was a lot of kings. And did you know what Kirsten actually means? Why no, I was going to ask. Yes, Kirsten comes from the Greek word Christos, which means Christian or follower of Christ. It also means follower of the anointed. He anointeth our head with oil and maketh us kings. She is a Christian that follows the anointed one who became a king. Merely coincidence? Um, no. Precisely. <laughs> there are no coincidences, old man. Um, Holmes, I agree with you there, but uh, that brings a good point. Why do you keep calling me old, since I'm the exact same age as you? Oh, well, uh, sorry about that, old chap. Uh, I didn't mean to offend. Uh, there's just something about you that seems old. Uh, perhaps it's your wisdom and stoic nature. Oh, thank you. I resemble that remark. No, Bones, I've been deep in study in the historical documents, and I would like to show you just some of what I've been studying. Wow, that's deep. Let's show the folks at home. In addition to studying the books of Daniel and Revelation and Matthew and Isaiah, I consulted with some of my favorite teachers, like this channel, Last Trumpet Blast. Fantastic insight into the book of Revelation. In fact, he does an entire series on the book of Revelation. There's this young man, The Last Trumpet Blast. And if you go to his playlist, you will see a complete animation of the book of Revelation, as well as the Revelation chapter by chapter, where he narrates as the pictures appear on the screen. It's incredibly enlightening. Then I consulted my old friend, Pastor Michael Pearl, at the door, and the truth about the kingdoms, and his take on the Revelation. He actually painted a giant mural of the book of Revelation. It's quite astounding. That's Michael Pearl at the door. Then, I was alerted to this incredible study 
of the End Times and Daniel Unsealed by Rock Island Books and C.J. Lovick. Incredible. Although I disagree with his end conclusion, I was able to glean incredible wisdom from what he said. Then there's this young fellow, Pastor Monty Judah. He's a Messianic Jew at Lion and Lamb Ministries. And he also does an incredible series on the book of Revelation, where he walks you through every book and every chapter. Again, I have some disagreement with this young man. You see, he doesn't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. But nevertheless, I was able to gain incredible wisdom from him. Then we all know our old pal, Chuck Missler, and he does a Revelation series. There's old Chuck. Old Chuck is now young Chuck because he's already up in heaven. I don't know why they call him the late when they are actually the early. The early Chuck Missler. Edgar Casey. The Konia House is uh, old Chuck's Young Chuck's website. Then also, this was incredible. The Bible Project. Specifically, The Revelation of Jesus. A two hour and four minute production in the which they animate each book, each chapter of Revelation along the way as you're listening to the explanation. And then finally, present you with a gigantic mural of the entire book. In the interim, they had this young man up there reciting the entire book of Revelation from memory. I was so jealous. I'm not there yet, old Watson. Then there's my old friends at Exposing Truth. This is Pastor Joseph Good. And he does a series on the Hanukkah, Exposing Truth. Excellent series, and one you'll want to learn. This fellow did this study more than 20 years ago. He actually used a thing called a chalkboard. It was amazing. He also has an excellent series about Purim. Remember when we covered the book of Esther earlier? We may be revisiting it. So you see, Bones, old chap, I've been quite busy. You see, I don't want to just hop date to date, willy-nilly without any reasoning. I do deep investigation and diligently study the meaning of every single possibility. That is the responsibility of the Watchman. So, without further ado, I'd like to put up a timeline highlighting our next watch date, which is the 10th day of the 8th month, the day that the Lord instructed Noah to bring his family onto the ark, in the which he sat for seven days, a period of seven. If we are raptured into heaven, to our heavenly Jesus, who is our ark, and then sit for a period of seven. Well, we won't be sitting. We'll be partying, Mr. Bones. Oh, yeah, this is going to be the greatest. Uh, we won't be just sitting there being sad, that's for sure. Uh, yes, thank you. I misspoke there a moment. But in reference to Noah and his family, who had seven days of waiting before the great flood happened. Now, unlike many others who have looked at this time, I believe that the 10th, of the eighth month, this is Cheshvan, which falls on our November 26th, which is actually the pagan feast of Thanksgiving, in the which the pagans tried to steal the tabernacle feast of God. And isn't it interesting that they are actually coinciding with the anniversary of the day they entered the ark? But Holmes, what about the people that still don't believe this is the eighth month? Well, bonesy old man, I really can't help them any more than I have. According to the constellations, 
The sun is testifying of the eighth month, which is in the scales. And during this time, we will see the moon testify of a flood scenario as well. You see, the Lord made a clock, and it's a perfect clock. And it included the sun, moon, and stars. And at the time of the Feast of Trumpets, when the Lord spoke the universe into existence and the earth and the heavens, he started on Rosh Hashanah. At the same date later in life, he displayed the virgin giving birth to a child, Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. And the son testified in the woman, the virgin, in the sky. Because God's timing is perfect. Now, at the time of the Passover, the lamb is taken into the temple to be slaughtered exactly at the Passover. At this exact same time, Jesus Christ was being brought to the cross, just like that lamb that was being brought to the slaughter. Now, there's a lamb in the sky. And did you know that the sun was testifying in the lamb being slaughtered? From our Noah's Ark scenario, the Noah's Ark comes to rest. Now, remember, the months were changed. The numbers of the months were changed from the first to the seventh and from the seventh to the first. So the Lord started the world on Rosh Hashanah. And so when he was speaking of the first month back then, it is what we now know as the seventh month. And in Exodus 12, he told Moses to change it. And at the Passover, now call that the first month. You have to remember that. Because in the story of Noah's Ark, this is another testament of how specific the Lord is. You see, although he seemed to load on the second month, it was actually what we now know as the eighth month. And in the middle of the flood, after the waters had prevailed for 150 days, the Ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat exactly on the 17th day of the seventh month. That is now what we know as the 17th day of the first month, which is Resurrection Day. Now, Watson Old Chum, do you remember what Ararat means? Uh, reverse the curse? Precisely! So, the Lord orchestrated the entire flood scenario for rain to happen for 40 days and 40 nights, for the waters to prevail upon the earth for 150 days, for the wind to pass over and start the waters to aswag, exactly at the time to bring the ark to rest on the mountains of Ararat at reverse the curse, the same time that the Lord Jesus Christ came out of the grave which reversed the curse. Now tell me, Bones, old chap, do you think God might choose a random day for the rapture? Um, when you put it that way, I think absolutely not. Thank you. I rest my case. No more questions. All right. Without further ado, let's draw our timeline. Now, Michelle Bones, I'd like you to cover your eyes. Oh, why, uh, certainly. You got them covered? Uh, yeah. I, uh, can't see a thing. Okay, Watson, you can now take a look. Wow, that's heavy. You did that fast. The magic of TV! Ow. All right, Watson, I'm gonna walk you through it. Now remember, we've listed the months as the Hebrew months. The eighth month, 10th day. First month, 14th through the 17th day. Third month, 15th day, etc. Now, I am not going to give the Gregorian dates for all of these, but I'll give you the start date. The anniversary of the day we got on the ark, we, figuratively speaking, the Lord instructed Noah to bring his family, Noah representing Jesus Christ, getting in the ark representing Jesus Christ, taking seven family members representing the church. Symbolism, wonderful. Eighth month, eight, new beginning, ten, completion, wonderful numerological, numerological representation. But the date will be November 26, 2020. 
that is Thanksgiving, and what a thankful day it would be for us forevermore. So, from the date they loaded the ark, it is 1290 days until the 15th day of the third month, which is Shavuot, the day that the Lord descended upon the mount and Moses brought the people up. Very interesting. It is also 1335 days to the Pentecost. Remember, when he descended and spoke so loud, the people begged, don't let him speak anymore. Only speak to you, Moses, and we'll listen to what you tell us he said. So it didn't go so well. So the Lord called Moses back up the mount. The period of time in between these was 50 days. He was up there. It was a three-day consecration. He was up there for seven days and 40 days, which brings us to the first day of the fifth month, which we have learned during our studies. That is the true Pentecost, the new wine. This is the anniversary of the day that Moses and Yahshua, representing Lord God the Father and Lord God Jesus Christ, descended and the people were worshiping the golden calf, but not all of them. And the Lord, represented by Moses, said, Who's with us? Come up! And the Levite priests came up. Remember, we're going to be made into a kingdom of kings and priests. So, the fact that these dates are connected by that same period of time of the 1290 and the 1335 makes this highly significant. Now, here's what we had to do. You see, we have to be ready to be open to learning a new thing. If we think we've got it all and we've always had it, we are most likely wrong. So, I've learned many things along this ministry that I found out to be absolutely true, like Shavuot being on the 15th day of the third month at the full moon, and the Pentecost not being the same as Shavuot, but being the new wine festival, first day of the fifth month. I've also learned that the 1260 and 1260 don't have to meet together in the middle. The time period is given as a 1260 from the time of the, of the Antichrist walking in till another event. From the time of one event till the time of another event is described as 1260. It does not say, and I reread Daniel and Revelation many times to prove this out, it does not say one thing happened, 1260 days later, this thing happened, and from that same day, 1260 later, this thing happened. No, these time periods are given. We seem to uh, understand that they are two sets of 1260, the total time period equaling seven years, but we do understand there is more than seven years because of 1290 and 1335. So I digressed a lot there. All right, so the fact that 1290 and 1335 bring to these two times that is the summer of 2024, the wheat harvest. We believe there's going to be a group of people, especially the Jews, raptured at the mid-tribulation. We have a summer Shavuot Pentecost rapture scenario throughout the Old Testament. Multiple, multiple scenarios. So these would fit perfect with that time period and would speak to the Jews also. Remember, when Noah got on the ark, he was representing the Jews being carried safely through the tribulation also. So there's, there's multiple representations there. So what we believe is the flood could exactly, loading the ark could exactly fulfill the rapture scenario and bring us to these two mid-tribulation dates. Now, before these periods are fulfilled, another event happened. Now, this might blow some of your minds. I believe that the Antichrist will be Jewish. I believe that he will try to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ and that he will actually try to fulfill Scripture. So he'll be from the tribe of Judah. They will find that he was born in Bethlehem and went through Nazareth, etc. So I believe that he will come into Jerusalem on the 10th day of Nisan, just as Jesus did, and that he will die on the 14th of a deadly head wound and then be resurrected on the 17th. That makes scriptural sense. From that day, this is very interesting, 1260 days brings us right to trumpets, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. Mid-tribulation still counts. 
mid doesn't have to be the exact middle divided by two, which we have thought for a while is not because of the 1290 and 1335. But these time periods are fulfilled on this timeline. To, to uh, complete uh, uh, the timeline from here, from, from load the ark, 1290 to Shabbat 1260 days to Hanukkah. End scenario. We could stop with that. But blessed is he who comes to 1335. Now, from Passover, Antichrist entering, defiling the temple, being raised from the dead, and then doing what they wished he would have done at the beginning, walk into Jerusalem and declare himself God. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? From that day, 1260, to trumpets, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot, when we come racing behind Jesus Christ on the white horse, clothed in white linen, and he is on a white horse, clothed in white linen, covered in blood, his own blood, the blood of atonement. We've all thought that he would return on atonement, but he has to fill, fulfill trumpets. So I believe he'll come back on with the trumpet, fulfilling trumpets, and then he will fulfill Yom Kippur and Sukkot in ready order, which brings us to 30 more days is the 1290. That's what will take to cleanse the temple. So remember, there's going to be a temple here, which is an abomination anyways, because uh, the Lord didn't want them to go back to sacrifice. So from the time that he defiles it and calls himself God, until we return to take over, and the war of Armageddon and the smoten and the smiten and the blood going to the bridle of the horses. 1260 to start, but then we will also cleanse the temple, which will take 30 days. There's your 1290 days. And then, blessed is he who comes to the 1335. From that Passover, 1335 brings us to Hanukkah. Hanukkah is the time of rededicating the temple, when the new temple will come out of Jerusalem. So, this lower timeline is exactly what we've been saying since day one with our poster, with our chart. But we thought that the tribulation had to start on a trumpet and end on a trumpet or atonement. And the truth is, if you read the end of the book of Revelation, you realize, oh wow, the tribulation doesn't end at Day of Atonement when his foot hits the mount. That starts a big bloody war and some uh, uh, demons and beasts getting thrown into hell. So there's a, there's a lot more going on. So we've all been under the mistaken uh, uh, belief for so long that we just accept it as, as self-evident. But, but the truth is, the, tri the tribulation does not end on the Day of Atonement. It ends later. So the beginning to the end still fits within our seven-year scenario. And like I've been saying for quite a while, Jesus will be... Let's see, where did I put it? Jesus will be ruler over us for seven years and six months before he is ruler over everybody forever. So, from this date of Hanukkah, I believe six more months on another Nisan, Jesus will be anointed as the true king over the world because he was anointed as a false king with the false crown and uh, the sign over his head, Jesus, king of the Jews, which spelled out yud Hey vav Hey. So, uh, I... I when we go up in the rapture, he'll be king over us. He'll be anointed. We'll come to a crowning ceremony and he'll be king over us. And we'll have a marriage. And then seven years later, he calls up the rest of his bride to the marriage of the bride, which is going to be the mid-tribulation saints and then the remnant. And there's going to be the wedding supper of the Lamb. So just like in the story of Jacob, we represent Leah. We're the first marriage. And then he works seven more years to get his second bride, Rachel, which is the one he wanted in the first place. So uh, this... This scenario is pretty awesome, and it doesn't even end there. Let me show you one more thing. All right, this is a little extra uh, that we can find from the book of Daniel. So, Daniel chapter 8, verse, let's start at 13, and uh, we'll read 13 and 14. Okay, then I heard one saint speaking. And another saint said unto that certain saint which spake. Now, first of all, these are saints talking, right? So, uh, who are the saints in heaven? That's us. So, this, this, this conversation is between two saints that got raptured. Not, not angels, not John. These are saints. These are not elders. These are saints. These are raptured people. Pre-tribulation raptured people. So, I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, 
How long shall the vision be concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Okay, so, 2,300 days is 6 years, 4 months, and 15 days. Your 1,250 days, 1,260 and 1,290, minus 6 years, 4 months, and 15 days, equals 8 months and 10 days, or about 250 days. Okay, so just do the 2,550 minus 2,300 days equals 250. So that's 8 months and 10 days. So, if we leave in the 8th month on the 10th day, Eight months and ten days later, the Antichrist rises up to take power and the temple is being built during this period of time. And so he signs a covenant with many and gives them the temple. Perfect timing. Then the transgression of the daily sacrifice is an abomination to the Lord because Jesus is the sacrifice. But the daily sacrifice will continue until the midst of the tribulation, again, not the exact center according to this period of time, but right here at the Passover, he'll come in. So, so at this point, he'll sign a covenant for one week. But, you know, eight, eight months of that year is already gone, right? So it won't be, it won't be exactly uh, seven years and then in the midst at exactly three and a half years. But it, it'll be a seven-year covenant, but in the midst of it. So it'll, it'll be a little bit shorter than a full seven years that he breaks it. But... This scenario, leaving on 8th month, 10th day, going 8 months, 10 days, brings us to, oh, I, I forgot to tell you the best part. Guess what day that is? Ninth of Av. Huh? Pretty cool? Then from the ninth of Av, 6 years, 4 months, 15 days later, brings us to Hanukkah, when the temple will be cleansed. Huh? What do you think? That's pretty cool. Hey, look, I mean... You crunch enough numbers, you can make some things work out. And, and I'm not saying I'm 100% sold on this, you know. Uh, but in fact, I'm, I'm really trying hard not to already look at Hanukkah because of the beautiful scenario. But um, I, I tell you, uh, this, this day, Thanksgiving, have your eyes wide open. This scenario fits. We're learning each time. We learn more. We're getting more of these pieces, and it's fantastic. So uh, just one last thing. If uh, we leave here, 810, which I don't know if you can still see this up here. Um, a short period of time later brings us to Tuba Shabbat, the new year of trees. That's a possible time for the two witnesses, which are known as the two trees, the two olive trees pumping olive oil into Jerusalem, into the uh, Israelites, to the Jews. Uh, so that's a possible time for the uh, two witnesses to come, and their ministry we know is 1260 days. And so from that date, three years and a half brings us right to to Ba'av. Possible scenario. Um, I uh, originally thought the two witnesses would be raptured at uh, the uh, Passover, but, you know, as I studied more, I think, I think the Antichrist needs to make his big debut here. So, um, we'll see. But, there you go, folks. Uh, again, uh, <laughs> I really wasn't crying in bed. I was uh, busy at work. Uh, studying and, and trying to put this all together. So I hope it's enjoyable. And uh, now uh, maybe we have time for a song and some cute little animals and some other pleasurable things. You know, I want to um, uh, give you a little clip of uh, some words of wisdom from my good friend, Pastor Sandy, over at Soldiers for Christ. The Sandman, I call him. And um, I just, uh, I, I think these are, are words of wisdom and, and uh, something to really um, uh, think about in these last days. Okay, so here's uh, my good friend, Pastor Sandy. Now, what I'm, what I'm going to read to you, this is reality, okay? What you're watching in the news, that's drama. You understand? That's drama. You don't know if any of that stuff's going to happen. Did you guys hear about the 300 uh, Christians that were dragged into a concentration camp and beheaded today? What? No, it didn't happen. See, because you're not there. Forget about what's going on in the world. Your 
Amen. So we've got to stick with God in his reality and not get caught up in who cheated Trump, who's producing the, the virus, who's, who's, uh, who's going to make a vaccine. Are they going to make all of us make vaccines? Is, do we have to wear masks everywhere? Are people going to get arrested? Are they going to close down all the churches? All of this stuff is nail body drama that God is like, that's not your concern. You're not to sit there. I'm going to say this, and I, I hope I don't even get to the scripture now that I remember this. I'm talking to one of the members the other day, and he says, you know, he grew up in witchcraft, right? And he says, one of the things that, uh, he's born again now. He says, one of the things that Christians don't understand is God's commandment for us to be joyful and to keep our minds on positive things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he said, demons feed off of confusion and sadness. They feed off of it. Wow. He says, it's a, it's a place where they can dwell and be because there's confusion. He says, the whole thing that they're doing in the media is creating drama and confusion and they want you to see it because it lowers your strength out yeah. and, and it invites demons in. And he says, they know what they're doing and I know what they're doing. Mm. He says, the word media is a, is a demonic witch's name. <gasps> he says, that's why the, 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 the actor called Medea use the name because it's the name of a demon that you invited as you say. Look at that. So he's telling me all this stuff that he grew up with. But he says if Christians would understand that the joy of the Lord is yeah. their strength yeah. and to think on positive things is their strength mm -hmm. they wouldn't watch as much YouTube Ooh. as they do. Because you can't get happy doing that. Mm -mm. You need to. God is saying when you're joyful Demons are fearful of you. They don't want to be in your presence. Demons feed off of confusion and sadness. They feed off of it. Wow. He says it's a it's a place where they can dwell and be because there's confusion. He says the whole thing that they're doing in the media is creating drama and confusion and they want you to see it because it lowers your strength out yeah. and, and it invites demons in. And he says they know what they're doing and I know what they're doing. Mm. He says the word media is a, is a demonic witch's name. <gasps> he says that's why the, 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 the actor called Medea used the name because it's the name of a demon that you invited as you said. So he's telling me all this stuff that he grew up with. But he says if Christians would understand that the joy of the Lord is yeah. their strength Hallelujah. and to think on positive things is their strength, mm. they wouldn't watch as much YouTube Ooh. as they do. Amen. Because you can't get happy doing that. Mm -mm. You need to, God is saying, when you're joyful, Demons are fearful of you. They don't want to be in your presence. Why? <laughs> because God, because in the presence of joy, that's heavenly stuff. Yeah. They don't want to be in the presence of that. So he was, he was just explaining to me, you people, we don't understand spiritual battles, so we do things that lower our defenses. My God. And we're sitting there and we're watching negative stuff, negative stuff, negative stuff, until the time till we get to the point where we're so negative mm -hmm. that the spirit of God can't even operate in our realm because it's a filthy atmosphere. Wow. But he operates in a spirit of joy. Yes. He said, I wish I could get Christians to understand the importance of joy. That's why we have singing in church. Yes. That's why that clown don't want us sing. Right, right. Because singing brings joy and praise. We're going to the chapel and we're gonna get married. Going to the chapel and we're gonna get married. Jesus, I love you and we're gonna get married going to the chapel above who knows 
what tomorrow brings in a world few hearts survive all i know is the way i feel when it's real we keep it alive the road is long there are mountains in our way but we climb a step every day <laughs> love lift us up where we belong up, up where, where the eagle cries on the mountain high love lift us up where we belong far from the world below up where the clear winds blow time goes by no time to cry time for you and i alive today love lift us up where we belong oh so very soon maranatha my lord come for us and lift us up so don't you dare close your eyes or i'll sing i can show you the world <laughs> shiny shimmering splendid tell me princess now when did you last let <laughs> your heart so high? On a warm summer's eve, on a train bound for heaven, I met up with a date setter. We were both too tired to sleep. So we took turns of staring at the YouTube about the rapture. Excitement overtook us, and he began to speak. He said, Son, I've made my life out of reading these here scriptures, knowing the deeper meaning by the Holy Spirit lead. So if you don't mind me saying, I can see a day it is passing. Let's both take communion. I'll give you some advice. So I handed him my Bible, and he opened to the best part. Then he bombed a colored pen and asked me for twelve highlighters. And the night got deathly quiet, and his face lost all expression. If you're gonna play the game, boy, you got to learn to play it right. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. When you're counting the Lord's days, you got to keep in mind his motives. There'll be more understanding when the date has come. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Know when to walk away, know when to run, when you're counting the Lord's days. You gotta keep in mind his motives, there'll be more understanding when the date has come. You got to know when to hold them, when to hold them, know when to fold them, when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. When you're counting the Lord's days, you gotta keep in mind his motives. There'll be more understanding when the date has come. Chicka, 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 chicka. That is Noah and Jay. Oh wow. That might get serious up there. I hear either Abby or Bailey screaming. <laughs> I think it might get faster. <laughs> This thing goes way up there. It's beautiful, and the temperature is wonderful. There goes the boys. Now we're cruising. Woo! Okay.
of instructions. Oh, <laughs> I thought it said let go of the handle. <laughs> Hey Bonesy, look how awesome God is. Jesus was crucified on Golgotha, the place of the skull. I think he did this to demonstrate penetrating through that hard skull, that thick skull of mankind. And that's actually the word repent, is to rethink. So within the natural rock formation is actually the face of a skull. Hey, that looks like my cousin Stan. Bonesy. Okay, so here are seven verses about this approximately three and a half year period of time. The 1260, the 1290, 1335, described as a time times and a half, or a time times and a dividing of time. Uh, and uh, these seven verses talk about the seven year tribulation period. Uh, I like number five there, uh, Revelation 12, 6, and it talks about the 1260 days. See, that when you spend enough time in the Bible, when you when you are frequently in the Bible, uh, that frequency uh, puts you on God's frequency, and uh, you learn more about His nature. So it is in His name and in His nature to um, give us wisdom and to order our steps through His Word. And uh, He wants us to figure this out. I, I keep telling everyone He delights in our study and in our pursuit, and even in our wrong guesses, because He sits there. Uh, up there in heaven on the throne with a smile on his face knowing, oh, my children love me so much. They just want to figure this out. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're on our way and uh, it's been a fun uh, revelation uh, journey if you, uh, if you think about it that way. Hey, I just want to give you a little bit more on the uh, Daniel prophecy and the 2300 days because this was a dual prophecy and it was already fulfilled by Antiochus Epiphanes. Uh, which was a Hellenistic uh, king of the Seleucid Empire, when he came in and murdered the high priest, Onias II, and took over the temple. And then he, he started just to decimate the Jews. And any of the Jews that would come over to be Hellenists, uh, he would reward and um, give high authority and give money and everything. And then anybody that resisted, you know, he was having them murdered and slaughtered. And if the, if the women had their babies circumcised... And it was found out he would kill the baby and then hang the dead baby around the woman's neck. And she wasn't allowed to take it off and she had to walk around like that till she died or went insane or whatever. I mean, just, just really horrible. And so he is a picture of the Antichrist that will come. But look at these details. So he murders Onias II in 171 BC. Later, he sets up an idol, the abomination of desolation that Jesus spoke of in the Gospels. He sets that up on a Hanukkah at the time of a Hanukkah. And it was a statue of Zeus, but he had his own face carved on it. So, um, you know, I, I, that's, I don't know why it wasn't just a whole statue of him, but uh, maybe Zeus had a better body and he just wanted his face on that body. I don't know. But then he, uh, he sacrificed a, a, a disgusting sow pig because he knew that was the most insulting thing to the Jews. So he did that on a Hanukkah. But the thing is, he, he murdered Onias and took over until the Maccabees, led a revolt, okay, the Maccabees is that little group that, uh, that fled to the mountains, and they came back, and they fought against this gigantic army, an impossible battle, and they won. And they took the temple back in 165 BC. So the total time was 2,300 days. Huh? What do you think? And the time between the, um, the abomination and desolation until they came back and, and reset it, uh, the Hanukkah was, um, I, I, I believe the abomination happened at a Hanukkah, and the, and the cleansing happened at a Hanukkah, also, uh, I'm, I may be off on, on when the abomination was set up. That might have been, uh, you know, the exact three and a half years. It probably was. Um, I just don't have the details on that. I'm not sure if we know that from history. But then the Maccabees start cleansing the temple, which took about 30 days, right? And they, uh, they find one jar of oil to, to light the holy lamp. And um, it takes uh, a period of time. I think it takes eight days to, to um, purify this oil to be used. But they had one jar. So they put the oil in, but it lasted for eight days. And so that is why Hanukkah is celebrated for eight magical days. So look at that. There's, there's how God works. Okay. And that's why 
we can actually look at this and, and make an educated guess that, that these things will fit together. So are we following the pattern he's laying out for us? Now, I've heard people say, oh, that, that miracle, the oil, that's an old Jewish wives tale. You know, that, that, that didn't happen. Really? <laughs> you know, God can use this little army of Maccabees, this one family, you know, to fight against this giant army and win. But, uh, oh yeah, he couldn't make oil last uh, eight days. That's, that's, that's too far out. <laughs> <laughs> People are funny, right? So, uh, and I, so, I've got a few more things to show you just to testify of the awesomeness of our Father. Because our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Hey, and then, uh, that's what my daughter and my wife did. My, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven on earth with wisdom, power, and love. <laughs> I don't know the sign language. Anyways, uh, so we'll look for more. Here's another little juicy tidbit for you. The Dome of the Rock, the, uh, another type of abomination of desolation, was constructed between 685 and 691 AD. So first of all, that's seven years. Flash forward 1,335 years from 685 is... twenty twenty. Seven years, 2020. Are we on the right timeline, folks? Here's a uh, article about it. There's the ugly wart on the holy spot. And there you see the 685 to 691 Al-Aqsa Mosque. So um, there's many more uh, prophecies that really point to 2020 and... Um, one thing I forgot to mention on the last portion, the uh, calendar that the Jews currently use um, came from, remember Antiochus was a Hellenist and any of the Jews that came over, they became called Hellenistic Jews, right? And, and the ones that wanted to stay Jewish, <laughs> um, he murdered. Um, so the calendar that the Jews are currently using is from that Hellenistic Jew background. So, um, uh, and you know, there are many verses about uh, uh, God hates their calendar and, hate, or, well, hates their feasts and uh, their, uh, their celebrations because they're off and, and they're just wrong. So, anyways, <laughs> we're going home soon. <laughs> okay, how about another little delicious tidbit from our father? So, this is the letter Shin. This is the 21st letter. Uh, and this is the uh, letter, remember there's 22 Hebrew letters. And Shin is number 21, and then Tav, which is the cross, that's uh, number 22. So, um, 21 is 7 times 3, and you see how this letter looks like three sevens? And uh, this is the, uh, the number letter picture, if you will, that God identifies himself with. And he wrote his name on Israel. So, uh, I'll show you a picture of that. This is... The letter Shin and some of the different forms that it can be in. And, and that is Israel, showing the Temple and the Kidron Valley and the Rephaim Valley and the Hinnan Valley. And you say, oh, but Dr. Berry, that letter is written, written backwards. No, it was written from the inside. <laughs> Our God is an awesome God. He reigns, reigns. I got to learn that sign language. I, I, every time I sing it, I want to do the thing. <laughs> Anyways, pretty awesome, huh? All right, and I'll leave you with this last piece of awesomeness. This is the Hebrew letter Tav, the ancient Hebrew version of that. I'll show you the changes it went through over time from early Hebrew, middle Hebrew, kind of turned on its side and looked more like an X, and late Hebrew and modern Hebrew. I'm the Aleph and the Tav. Now, I want to show you a cellular adhesive molecule known as laminin. You see how it looks just like our Tav? And this molecule literally holds our human cells together. This is another electron view. This is a scientific diagram of it. It's, it's made of three chains. And uh, alpha, beta, and gamma. And holds our cells together. So Jesus, he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Colossians 1.17. And there's our 117 code. But I'm going to leave you with a picture that uh, I took at that amazing 
prophetic wedding, at least prophetic to me in my life, uh, of Gabriel, angel Gabriel, king, future kings, and Kirsten, which means Christian, the, uh, the follower of Christ, the follower of the anointed, and she was anointed and became a king. <laughs> And uh, they did this little ceremony, which I'd never seen. Uh, I forget what it was called, and I wish I could have filmed it because it was so beautiful, but it had to do with tying three chords together. And so um, uh, when, when they did this in there, there was a verse in there. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave you with that picture, but it, it literally, <laughs> what I'm, I, I just couldn't believe, it looks exactly like this scientific drawing. So I don't know if the person who made that uh, display knew that but that, that's pretty awesome so I, I just felt like um it was uh that whole wedding was a, another sign to me from my beloved that says i'm coming soon and uh this wedding is going to be for you <laughs> all right so uh i hope that this uh will tide you over for a little while until we are up in the clouds art thou with me in jest <laughs> this looks exactly like laminin it's so cool now, the Hebrew word kava has the definition that uh, implies to intertwine three chords, just like this. Now, the Hebrew word kava means wait, as in, wait upon the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. How beautiful is this? He holds us together and he makes us strong. And here's our little puppy, Zorro. And here's our little puppy, Charlie. Hello, Charles. And here's our little puppy, Nacho. And here's our little puppy. What the? Little bit? You're not a puppy. No wonder the other cats don't like you. You're hanging out with the dogs. Oh, here's another reason the other cats don't like you and they're so mean to you. Because you're the favorite. You're the sweetest and most kind and cuddly and, oh, you're just a love. Look at you snuggle. You're such a snuggler. Yes, your mama loves you. Mm. <laughs> what a sweetheart. Zorro, you're never going to catch it. So I'll leave you with the testimony in the stars on the uh, flood scenario. On November 26, the sun testifies of both judgment and Satan, and the moon testifies of the rapture fish. By flood day, the sun is in the constellation representing Satan, and the moon is in the constellation of the immortal twin getting his immortality from his immortal brother. Hmm. Now, remember, the sign that was promised to the Jews was the sign of Jonah. And it happened April 9th, 2017, where the Venus was actually in the belly of the fish for three days. From that date to the flood date is precisely... 1,335 days. Now, blessed is he who comes to the 1,335. Precisely!